guys, it's Sam, and today I'm going to be ranking all of the couples that I read about in 2016. Started this video last year, 2015, and you guys really liked it, and I really like talking about it. It's just a really cool way to dissect basically all of the books that I read in the last year. I'm not going to be doing a disappointing reads video because a lot of the books that I mentioned with the really bad couples, all the books I mentioned with the really bad couples are also books that I hated. So it'd just be a repetitive video if I did that. I will say that there probably are a few missing. I'm including only canon relationships, so canon in the book that I read. So if they became actually canon later on, then they're not included in this one. And I didn't necessarily include every single side relationship. So if some side characters had relationships, I didn't necessarily include them. Sometimes I did, sometimes I didn't. So I kind of used my own discretion here. I do have 48 couples on this list. So let's just get going, because it's going to take a long time. That's why I'm sitting. I'm sitting today because it's going to be a long video. So number 48 is Tatiana and Alexander from the Bronze Horsemen. I've done a whole video on this, which I will link on the screen. This relationship is utter and complete trash. It is just way too long of a book of just complete garbage. And it's a well-written book, but the relationship is garbage and abusive, mostly emotionally abusive. Later on, physically abusive. Like, it's, it's, just, a, it's just trash. And a lot of people really love this, and I do not understand how they are awful. Both of them are not even likable people. The dude is a complete and utter douchebag and not a romantic hero whatsoever. And the girl has absolutely no agency and is just walked all over and it's treated fine in the narrative. And I've read the synopsises for the next two books in the series. This is a series. And they're also trash. They're also trash. So, yeah. This is trash and I hate it like every second of reading it. Number 47 is Becca and Maddox from The Darkest Magic by Morgan Rhodes. I don't understand this relationship. I have a lot of issues with this side series that I do not plan on continuing. I still am going to read Fallen Kingdoms. I don't think I'm even going to finish this trilogy because I just don't like it. And their insta-lovey stupid relationship is one of the reasons I don't like it. It just, it doesn't make any sense to me. Their like instant connection thing is just like so oversaturated insta-love and their connection makes no sense and they also are like I love you and it's just it's just stupid. The girl gets transported as like kind of like a spirit into the world of Fallen Kingdoms where Maddox, one of the Fallen Kingdoms, a Fallen Kingdoms character from the past, so before Fallen Kingdoms, anyway, complicated. But he exists and they like meet because he can see her and he's like I love you. It's stupid. It's dumb. I'm not a fan. 46 is Frankie and Marco from The Lovely Reckless by Cami Garcia. <sighs> like this, this couple is a couple that I could have loved because this book screams of all of the early 2000s like teen comedy romance tropes but like it's just bad. It's just poorly written and like it, it's just full of it's just full of really bad tropes like it's kind of like Fast and the Furious with like sheath all that with like a bunch of other ones just kind of like thrown in there and then it's like look at this couple and like you can predict every beat of their relationship and what's gonna happen and what they're gonna say to one another like that's how predictable it is like there's a certain lines that I read throughout the book but especially with them as a couple and like their relationship building where I was like I bet you they're gonna say this next and they totally did like it was just so like contrived and just it was poor and I couldn't even have fun with it like it wasn't even because I can read some kind of like romance books that are just like kind of just fluffy trash and I couldn't even enjoy this because it was so like oh I could have I could have written this I could have written this then we have Mirabella Jules and Joseph I believe his name is from Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake I pretty I liked this book this book was like a pretty good pretty good edition but there's this really stupid love triangle and it just it it's it's dumb and it's also like this sort of like love potion element so like it's it's dumb, like I can't even talk about it seriously because it's just like, what? Like, it's like a love, I can't even remember exactly, I think it's like a love potion-y spell type thing that makes the dude fall in love with one of the other ones because he's loved one of them like his whole life and they're like gonna be together and they're really cute and adorable and then like he randomly meets this other one and like this whole spell thing happens and then it's like, well they're meant to be together and it's all just like contrived drama and it's dumb. Like, why are we adding in unnecessary love triangles? Like, I feel like the time for love triangles has definitely peaked in YA lit, especially. So, like, don't do them unless you can do them well. And this is not done well. Number 44 is Lily and Lowe from the Addicted series. I read the second and third book in 2016, and this couple, man, just grates on my nerves so bad. 
Lily is a sex addict and Lo is an alcoholic and they have like a really kind of toxic relationship and it's all getting worked on blah 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 but the characters are written as just as just their addictions like within this like romance story like each chapter is like Lily talking about how much she wants to have sex or do something sexual or whatever and Lo is just talking about like booze and like and they're all we'll talk about how bad they are from the other one and it's just like a mess and it's three books of this which is just infuriating and the only reason I'm reading this series is to get through them and get to the side characters which I'm not gonna actually mention because I could mention some of the couples that are side characters within that but I'm just gonna mention them like I'm sure I'm gonna read them this year so I'll just mention them this year when I actually get to read like in their perspectives because at this point I haven't read in their perspectives but I'm reading for those characters so I just need to get through the trash that is Lily and Lo. They're not compelling as a relationship at all. They were semi-compelling kind of back when they were being toxic, which is kind of bad to say, but that's when they are being interesting. And then they're just kind of like, get on with it. Th I've read this already in the first two books, and now the third book is the same thing, and it's just really irritating. So I'm so happy to be out of their stories and into someone else's this year. Like, God bless. Number 43 is back to The Darkest Magic, and that is Crystal and Farrell from The Darkest Magic with Morgan Rhodes. This is why I'm pretty much stopping this series, because both couples in this series I just don't like and I don't understand. I actually had a hope for Crystal and Farrell when I read the first book uh, last year, and now I know. Like, they just don't really make sense, and there's some really, like, kind of messed up things that have happened between them that I don't really know how slash if, but I think they will, like, actually end up, like, together or whatever. Like, I just, I get that feeling. But it's also, like, how? How at all? And, like, I really like the like kind of anti-hero, devil may care, bad boy sort of thing kind of with like fantasy and stuff especially, but like I don't even really like Feral, and that's saying something because I usually like those characters and I'm kind of like, nah. And when I'm like, nah, we, you know we have a problem. Then we have Luis and Will from Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. Obviously this book is ableist and there's a lot of issues with it, but just from a romantic standpoint. This book was always discussed as being like this big romance story and so tragic and blah blah blah. So I went into it with like, all right, I've heard that there could be some problematic things with this. I'm gonna keep my eye out. But also like I heard it's a really good love story. It's not. <laughs> it's not. Why is this book even advertised as a love story? I do not understand. It's such an unfulfilling story as far as like the love story side of it. And obviously there's a lot of issues because it's all framed as like being about Louisa and not about Will at all and like it's just weird and like especially in the book there's really no romance whatsoever and it's very like one-sided from her perspective and it's it's just weird like it's just it feels it feels off and it, it's not fun to read about and that'd be fine if it wasn't advertised as this like big love story but it is so obviously you go into it with that expectation and this was advertised as just like a literary fiction I guess type story that's one thing but it's advertised as a love story and then especially with the movie advertised as a love story like no then we have Hannah and Nick from Gemini mm -mm. Mm -mm. first off it starts off with Nick being like really creepy and hitting on her when she keeps telling him not to and she has a boyfriend and he keeps doing it and he keeps doing it and he does this whole kind of like nice guy behavior kind of thing he's like I'm a nice guy but and then he gets like rewarded for all that bad behavior because they end up kind of like having a little thing and it's like ew don't reward that behavior that's gross he's being gross like he was being totally like every cringy thing that like the douchey high school nice guy does and then he got rewarded for it what and they also started off as like not even like friends or anything like kind of in this like sort of antagonistic relationship and then by the end of it they like are really important to one another Okay. Number 40 is Adelaide and Cedric from The Glittering Court by Rochelle Mead. This is another book that has like obviously a ton of issues and it's not even a complete book. I've done a review on this one, so I'll link that on the screen. It's like, it's a trilogy, but the each trilogy piece is gonna fill in something because it's being told a different perspective. So it's not even like you get a full book in it, but whatever. The relationship, because this is the only book in this girl's perspective we're gonna get, so this is the only way we can explore this relationship is like so super rushed and like at the beginning it was kind of cute and then it was just like bam 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 and like just firmly cemented as like an end game thing which obviously if it's sort of a standalone within a trilogy you kind of have to do that but at the same time just kind of like that was fast <laughs> that was really fast do you guys even know each other 
I don't think you guys know each other. Number 39 is Akos and Sierra from Carve the Mark, another one that obviously has a ton of issues. This is why they're on the bottom of this list, because again, these are books that would make my disappointing reads list, obviously. But as far as just looking at the relationship with these two, this is another one just kind of like, it's very bland, it falls very flat. It's supposed to feel like very faded almost, because they both do have this like fate thing happening with like them crossing paths and like their actual foretold fates to kind of predict that. But it's very like, okay. And they actually could have been written as just a platonic relationship or like a very close platonic bond and that would have been better. But obviously it eventually goes this like romance route because the female main character is a girl who experiences a lot of pain. She has this like ability that she, if anyone touches her, she gives them pain and they give like her pain, whatever. It's just, it's a mess, obviously. We, we've we all heard all the things that are a mess about this book by now. But he is one of the people that can be around her, and so they have, like, that whole bond, which is so very predictable. And obviously, like, she is from the, like, savage group. Obviously, again, we know that that's a problematic thing to say, but she's from, like, the savage group. But then she shows him how, like, they're not savage in a very kind of Disney Pocahontas way. It's just, it's just dumb. And it's, one, it's like super tropey and it's been done a ton of times. Two, it's obviously taking place in a problematic book. And three, it's just not well written. So it's just boring. Like I don't even really remember much about their relationship because it's just so like, bleh. Like I really didn't even care about him as a character. I cared about her more than anything as a character. And I didn't really care about their character interactions at all. It was very forced. Number 38 is Edward and Anne from Blackheart's Oh, this book. I hated this book this last year. It is pegged as a Blackbeard retelling, origin story, and it's not that at all. This is actually a historical fiction kind of romance because we don't have any pirate stuff. They are not on the seven seas. They Edward is not being, you know, a bad person at all, morally gray, anything. It's just like this super sickly sweet love story, which again would be fine if it wasn't advertised as a pirate story. Like, look at the cover. Blatant pirate story. And it's just like the origins of like the bad black beard. And then it's like, look at him being in love with this girl. It's like, that's fine if it's like a subplot. That is the main plot. How boring. And they're both boring. And like, there's uh, at least give me like angst. Give me something to work with. Like, I'm willing to work with you on the whole pirate thing if there's like angstiness. And there's just not. It's just like making moon eyes at one another. <laughs> like, and making dumb decisions. No, it's not compelling at all. Then we have Nikki, Jack, and Cole from Everbound. This is the second book in the Everneath trilogy. It's a trilogy that is, again, advertised as a Hades Persephone retelling, and it's really not. It's sort of like a Hades Persephone retelling mixed with an Orpheus and Eurydice retelling, and that kind of makes it the love triangle, where the girl is both kind of Persephone and kind of Eurydice. It's dumb. <laughs> I should stop with all, every time that I talk about a couple I don't like, I'm just like, it's dumb. But it's dumb, and it's a love triangle that's so unnecessary, and it's one of those love triangles where you know from the get-go who she's gonna pick, and she plainly says who she's gonna pick from book one. So you're like, why are you dragging out this love triangle for no reason? Like, we do, we know who she's gonna pick. So can we stop acting like the other dude even has a chance at all? Like, I find love triangles compelling, if there's a reason for the character to be like attracted to multiple and not being able to choose or whatever, which is obviously hard to do in and of itself, but also when both sides of the love triangle hold equal weight and have kind of like equal chance, then that's like kind of interesting to me. That's interesting and I can see that being like prolonged, but with this it's just like she said within like the first 50 pages of book one like who she's gonna be with, so like why are we dragging this out for no reason? Then we have Vin and Ellen from Mistborn, and I actually don't like super hate this couple. I just, it's another couple that I find kind of boring. I do not love Vin and Ellen as main characters. I kind of love them separately. I don't really like Vin. I like Ellen separately. I don't think Vin is a very well written female character, and she just grates my nerves for the most part. She grew on me throughout the series, but has never gotten to a potential where, like, I really love her. So their relationship is, like, pretty okay. It's just like kind of mediocre and I mostly put them lower on this list because they just kind of bore me. But this series is amazing and I love everything else about it, but like them as a couple and like the main couple? Nah. No thanks. There's another couple we'll talk about later that I really like, but them I'm just kind of, mm, I could give or take you. Then we have Catherine and Peter from Three Dark Crowns. They're another couple that was kind of interesting, a little messed up though. Parts of it are sweet. I don't really know where it's gonna go. Um, some messed up stuff happened with them. 
And they're not really a couple that I would necessarily say that I ship. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I mean, that's the best thing I can say is, like, I don't hate it. Then we have Finn and PD from The Bone Gap by Laura Ruby. Their relationship was interesting because there were some comments on, like, being able to see somebody for, like, who they truly are. PD is a girl who's not very conventionally attractive. Some would even say that she's kind of ugly. And the guy sees past that for, like, different reasons. They have, like, a really kind of cute relationship. But again, it's not one that I ever really think about again. And it's not one that I am really drawn to. Then we have Finnegan and Evangeline, I believe her name is, from Finnegan of the Rock. This is another couple that's kind of like, Matt, like, I don't hate them, but I don't really like them for any reason. And they're another couple that's kind of like, faded, destined, drawn to each other from the beginning, blah blah blah. And it's just kind of like, ugh, I'm really kind of done with that whole, like, plot point. And you don't really see them grow together a ton because they don't really, like, a lot of this book is keeping secrets for good reason, but like also keeping secrets so they aren't really able to get to know each other, but then by the end they're like, we love each other. And you're like, what? <laughs> like you guys don't know each other really. And like they've had this whole like thing, so you knew it was gonna happen, like, like through the entire book you have this like, we're gonna like, we're all intertwined and we mean a lot to another, and it's just like, you don't know each other. You just met. And you don't know each other, and you don't know anything about the other one. And yeah, but like the relationship isn't particularly bad and there's a few things that I kind of like, okay, all right, I'll go with it, but like a lot of the other ones in this category, meh. Then we have Lily and Savannah from Zodiac Star Force. These are cute characters. This series in general is just really cute. The thing that kind of pulled this couple down for me is that it's very kind of insta-lovey again and very instant. And I can kind of forgive it because this world is kind of like that, so you kind of have this like willful suspension of disbelief thing. But I would have liked them to kind of carry that into the second volume before they confirmed them as like being together, because this is a pretty short volume. And they don't meet like the first page. So it's kind of really rushed and it takes away some of that cuteness because it doesn't let me like buy into the cuteness because it happens so quickly. And it's just like, they met! And now they're basically together. It's like, Okay, like, that doesn't make a ton of sense. Oh, and we really care about each other a lot, and, like, we want to save the other one from, like, everything, and we're going to protect each other beyond everybody else. Just so, like, mm, you're cute! You're cute, but, like, no. Then we have Jeff and Sierra from Polaris by Mindy Arnett. This couple is, like, very just meh, in the middle, mediocre. I don't really even remember much about them. They're not, like, a bad couple. They're not anything that's particularly great. They're just kind of, like, boring flatline kind of supportive of one another, so that's kind of good. They're, they're just mediocre. I really I can't even remember much about them to even say anything about them. They're just kind of, meh. They're fine. They're not bad, but like, they're not like OTP worthy or anything. Then we have Adelina and Enzo from The Young Elites by Marie Lu. I've reread this book since reading it for the first time when it first came out, and when I first read it, I really didn't like them at all as a couple, and the second time reading it, I kind of understand why they are sort of together or drawn to one another, but I'm also like, I don't ship it because I find that it has kind of problems and it's kind of just weird. And it's just weird. It's really weird, but like I see why it happens and I almost kind of feel bad for them. Like I almost feel pity for them. And you don't want to feel pity for like something that you ship or anything, you know? Next we have Twyla and Leaf from The Sin Eater's Daughter by Melinda Salisbury. These I read about back in December and I still don't quite remember a ton about them because they're kind of just forgettable. Then we have Sierra and Robbie from Shadow Shaper by Daniel Jose Older, and these just suffer from me like not knowing enough about them, this being a very fast book and very short, and this book kind of struggles like a pacing thing, so you don't get to really see a ton of them. I like them though, they're really cute, and they have like this art thing that kind of brings them together, and they're like different kinds of artists, and it's very like cute. But you don't really get to see a ton of their, like, relationship develop. It's very much in, like, the very early stages, and you're focusing a lot more on, like, these supernatural plot points, so I don't really know enough about them to have them much higher on here. Then we have Zara and Aladdin from The Forbidden Wish by Jessica Corey, and I... Meh, I like Zara as a character, but, like, I didn't really care for Aladdin, which is funny because Aladdin is one of my, like, favorite characters from Disney, like, canon, and I just love the Aladdin movies and stuff, and... I didn't really care about him. Like, he's kind of just, he's really mediocre. And I'm like, girl, you can do better. So their relationship, I, I'm okay with because, like, I love her and she's happy and, like, all of that. But he's just kind of, like, very bland. So I'm like, girl, you're a genie. You could, like, 
do a ton more and it'd be way more interesting. But if you're a happy girl, I support you. Then we have Nyx and Ignifex, I think his name is, from Cruel Beauty by Rosa Nahaj. This is like a Beauty and the Beast slash Hades Persephone retelling, you know, girl has to go and marry a guy that she doesn't want to marry and, you know, then she ends up kind of falling for him and she was sent to kill him but like love gets in the way, that kind of thing. So you know what this was kind of gonna be, and I kind of, I, I like these like Beauty and the Beast narratives, so I'm already kind of like predisposed to like it, but again, they're not anything super different. Like, I liked the first half of the book more than the second, sort of, and, like, the writing gets really convoluted in this. So sometimes, like, it tries so hard to be, like, overly poetic or overly, like, his own sort of folktale feel that you just kind of get lost and so, like, any kind of character development or, like, their relationship developing is just kind of very muddled. So I like it just for it being that archetype that I like, but and not what I think about, really. And, like, one of the weaker ones of that archetype that I've read. Then we have Nick and Asher from Crystal Storm by Morgan Rhodes. This is the fifth book in the Fallen Kingdom series. So we've seen them a few times now, but they're still very much a side couple. You don't get to see a ton of them. You don't get to really hear a ton about them. They're just kind of very much like an afterthought kind of thing. And they're cute. I want to know more about them, but I don't know how much more we're going to know about them. And I like it, but I, I want more from it. So... Yeah, like, I don't really have a ton of feelings on them, other than I like it, and I wish we had more to kind of work off of. These couples are tied because they're from the same book, but they, I can't really separate them because I feel equally about both of them. Well, one's a little higher than the other, but like, I kind of, I kind of just want to talk about them in the same breath. And that's Elias and Helene, and Leia and Keenan from An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. I don't really like <laughs> Leia and Keenan as much, but I prefer those separations in the like love rhombus that's happening. Like I do not want Elias and Leia together at all. At all. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And I feel like it's gonna go that direction because they're like the two protagonists, but like I don't want it to go that direction. Like I prefer the most in this series, Helene and Elias like the most. So yeah, I actually like them a lot. I like them a lot and I want more with them and I'm not sure if it's gonna happen and like they have that friendship and there's they're just a lot that I want from that and I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna happen. But they're my preference for this series. Like I just want the people to end up with their with their arms out here, not the not the connecting branch. That's predictable if the connecting branch ends up together. Mm -mm. Then we have Jenks and Lovey from The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. This is another kind of side couple. I mean, you follow all of the characters on this ship, but I wouldn't necessarily consider their relationship to be like one of the main ones. I don't know. You kind of follow everybody a little equally. But there's stuff about this one that just makes me sad in general. And this is one of those like AI discussions and the mechanic is in love with the AI of the ship. And if you guys know anything about Mass Effect, the video game series, which I bring up whenever I talk about this book, there is a character, Pilot, is in love with the ship AI in that game, and I have a lot of feelings about that. So this is a very similar thing, and that kind of like all ties and blends together for me. But I don't really feel like we saw enough of them. They're not my favorite couple from this, but they still give me feelings because they're very cute. Then we have Quentin and Alice from the Magician's Trilogy by Lev Grossman, and they're a couple that I'm very, like, back and forth on, because, like, I like them and I pull for them, but also they're, like, a little bit unhealthy, but then as the series goes on, they really grow, and, like, where they are at the end, and, like, where the relationship sits at the end, I really like. So, yeah, they're, again, not a couple that necessarily, like, overly ship, and maybe I'll ship them in the show, I don't know, but... Yeah, I have conflicting feelings about them, because at the beginning I think they're pretty unhealthy for each other and kind of toxic, and the way their relationship starts is a little like, eh, but it's also pretty realistic for like the situation they're in. So yeah, with this series it makes you really like question a lot of things, it's really good for like analyzing and stuff, so they're one of those couples that's like, I look at them in more of like a, I want to analyze this way, that in a like, ooh, I ship it kind of way. Then we have Reza and Iman from The Demon King by Cinda Williams Chima. Now I kind of struggle with this book, it took me a long time to get through it, but their relationship? I really like. And there's a lot of stuff going on with them. There's a situation that is really going to make this potentially very, very angsty, and I like it a lot, but also it hurts me. So it's one of those couples that is, it's written pretty well, and it's, this is one of those books that like there are some different 
characters that could potentially get together at some point, but none of them are super obvious, and it's not like in a love triangle-y type like annoying way. I think it's written like pretty well as far as the character like relationship stuff. So a lot of people told me to read on with this and that there is an angsty relationship, so I'm kind of hoping it's them? I don't know. Then we have the version of Hades and Persephone from The Dark Wife by S.E. Dimer. This is a lesbian Hades and Persephone retelling, and I liked this as I like pretty much any Hades and Persephone retelling, but these, these characterizations were not quite on for me, so it was a little, like, subpar for me, and I like my Hades and Persephone with a little more angst to it as is like typical. And these characters are a little more like happy fluffy, which is fine, and I still like and like I'm still gonna read and I'm still gonna enjoy. But I like a little more back and forth with them a little bit, even if I know they're gonna end up together, I like a little more push and pull. And these characters just felt so like in sync and in line and like good for each other from the get-go, which is great and very healthy. But in my fiction I just like a little more push and pull from them. So still liked him, still great Hades Persephone but not my most favorite incarnation of them. Then we have Siri and Seussborn from Warbreaker by Rannon Sanderson, and these are a couple that are another, like, sort of Beauty and the Beast, Hades, Persephone, like, inspired. Not very, like, not very much, but, like, their foundation is kind of like that kind of trope, sort of. So I liked them, but again, they're just, like, very kind of cute, and I we didn't really see a ton of them and their relationship necessarily, but I liked what we did see, and I would love to see more if he does make the second book, which he's supposed to, obviously. There's a title and everything. It's just not going to come until like probably 2019 or something. But if we see more of them in like the next book, that'd make me really happy. But we didn't really see a ton of them in the first book for me to be like, ooh, I ship it a ton! Because like, we don't really see a ton. And the first half of them, like seeing them because of what's going on in the story, you don't really get to like really bond with them as a couple, but later on you're just like, oh, that's really great. <laughs> then we have a two-way tie from the same book. It's Nina and Matthias and Jesper and Wyland from Kruger Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. I love both of these couples for different reasons, but they they fall like, in the same vein. Like, obviously there's another couple I'll talk about later that I love like a ton more. But these two are all like really cute, just adorable. I like the progressions. I like seeing more Nina and Matthias, although we see a lot more of their like story in the first book, and then we see a lot more of the story of like Jesper and Wyland in the second book, and I like both of them. Jesper and Wyland are a little almost too happy for me, which I'm happy actually that they're happy because typically speaking you don't get to see gay characters just be like very happy and have like a nice happily ever after, so I'm really excited about that, but I just tend to be more driven with my shipping by like sadness. So obviously I'm going to be pulling a little more towards those like back and forth angsty couples and they've never really been that way. So they're just not my type of like emotional couple, but I still really like them. I still really like seeing them happy. I still really like seeing like fan art of them. And the same thing is true for Nina and Matthias. They, I like them a lot. I liked them a little more in the first book. I think we just, we just like saw more of them in the first book, but I still really like them and I still really like seeing them and they're still really cute. Then we have Kaz and Swift from The Abyss Surrounds Us by Emily Skretsky. This is a near future science fiction about like pirates and stuff and Kaz, the main character, gets taken in by some pirates and the girl that's in charge of her is Swift and they end up forming a kind of relationship but they also really recognize that they have a different power dynamic and they're not equal so they're kind of struggling with that and they will not start any kind of relationship until they are equals and it's a really good discussion of like all of that and having that kind of slow burn thing but also realizing they can't take it anywhere because of the power dynamics. So it's really cool and I really like seeing that and I'm really excited for the second book. So I'm excited to see where it goes because I think in the second book we're going to actually have their power dynamic kind of equal out and then we can actually see like an actual relationship with them which will be really great. Then so we have Katie and Ezra from Illuminae. I really liked them from the get-go. I like having relationships that are pre-page one love interests because it allows you to feel for them and like go through all this with them without it feeling like insta-love at all because they have this pre-existing connection. So at the beginning of this book they've actually just broken up and then all hell breaks loose and they're kind of pushed back together and I really like it. I just like them as characters both separately and together and they're just really cute and they're really supportive of each other and they're each other's kind of like harbors in this storm of what's going on in this like crazy messed up book and they're just really adorable and I love them. 
Then we have Kat and Levi from Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. They're just a very cute relationship. I actually didn't read a lot of contemporary this year, but when I read this I just flew through it and I just consider them very cute. I like their dynamic. I like them like getting together. I don't think anything is particularly like problematic or anything with them. Like they're just really cute and he's just really supportive and she reads them her fan fiction and it's just like it's just really cute. It's just a really cute nerdy relationship and I had a really easy time like picturing them together as like fully complete characters in a relationship and they're just they're just super cute. Just like a super cute cinnamon roll college relationship that's not skeezy. I liked it. Then we have Kestrel and Aaron from The Winner's Kiss by Marie Mikowski. This is the final book in The Winner's Trilogy and I still really like them. They were higher up on my list last year and they would have been even higher up on the list the year before if I would have had a list the year before. I still like them but something just fell flat with this book in general for me. Like I still really like, I think I gave it did I give it four or five stars? Like I still really liked it, but I just it was it didn't quite pack the punch, and I think it packed their relationship packed a bigger punch in the first two books than it did in this book. And there are a few things that were like a little bit contrived with them, I feel, and it just left the ending not quite satisfying for me with them. Still really love them, still love seeing their relationship, still love their dynamic, still love them separately and, and together as characters, but just not as much as I liked in previous books. Then we have Baphomet and Morrigan from The Wicked and the Divine. I love my little trash children. I just love all the Chthonic gods in this series in general, but these two are a couple of little just like twisted, messed up little dumb goth kids kind of. Like they're just so cute, but like they're they really support one another and like they also recognize they've both messed up as friends and as like former lovers and current lovers and whatever's going on with them at any given point. I just really like them together and they really do care about one another, but they also have this kind of like toxic twist to them at times, but they still really care and protect each other and I just really like them a lot. And it's Morgan and Baphomet, like, especially Morgan, like, queen. Then we have Amar and Maya from the Star Touch Queen by Roshni Chakshi. I love them, obviously. They are a Hades Persephone retelling with some Indian folklore mixed in and Mmm, I love them. Like those, this kind of like faded couple I'm into because it's Hades Persephone. I know before I go into it and that's what I'm gonna get. And I really like what was done with this and like what was keeping them apart and then what eventually brought them together and all this stuff. I just, I just love them. Like the, the kings and queens of the underworld, man, they just speak to me. And then we have Aristotle and Dante from Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Alida Sanz. They're so cute. Their friendship and their blossoming love is just so cute to follow. Again, it has that little angsty element in there for me, which I always really like, but ultimately ends up being really happy and it's just two friends learning and growing together and falling in love and their families being really supportive and it just being just like a feel good story. Like they're still being like, you know, struggles and everything, but and it being realistic, but like just makes me all warm and fuzzy inside. Then we have Cleo and Magnus from Crystal Storm by Morgan Rhodes, and they've taken a bit of a fall on this list, but it's fine. I mean, they've struggled a little bit in this book, but they're still one of my number one ships, one of my number one OTPs. But with this book, I just had a lot of problems with this book and with the characterizations, and I felt like, particularly with Cleo and Magnus, they're being kept apart for like no reason just to really draw it out, and it's just really irritating, and they feel like they're backtracking in a lot of ways, and it's just like, it's just really annoying. So instead of going in a nice forward progression, or at least like a nice windy progression, we're going like two steps forward, 15 steps back, and it's just it's just really jarring. So I couldn't really be like fully supportive of them this year with this book, but overall as a series I'm very supportive of them and like OTP I love them, but like in this book I was like get your shit together guys. Then we have Safi and Merrick from Truth Witch, and this is the first book that I read in 2016 and then I reread it just a little bit ago actually. I just finished rereading it. And when I was first making this list they were actually lower on the list, but then when I reread it I was like nah, they need to be higher. <laughs> like I really like them and they're not my favorite couple in the series and we'll talk about them shortly, but they are high up there and I actually like appreciate them a ton more second read through and they're just they're just really cute and they have that really like biting you know like back and forth and like we don't want to like each other but we do and damn it this is so inconvenient and like I just really like that. I like those kinds of couples and I'm interested to see how they like move forward 
and what happens over the course of the series because there's obviously a lot of series to go. Then we have Sazed and Tindwill from The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson. This is the second book in the Mistborn trilogy and they are one of the side couples, although we do get stuff in their perspectives kind of because it's like a multiple POV story, but I love them so much! Like I love them obviously way more than Vin and Ellen who were like at the bottom of the list. I just adore them. I would rather have the books taking place in like their perspectives and them being the main characters. They're so great. They're like mature because they're older characters and they're both really wise but they also have like a very kind of at times antagonistic relationship. Like not antagonistic in that they like hate each other but a very like they disagree on things. They disagree on certain things about their culture and their religion and how to handle things and it's just like a very mature relationship and I just really really appreciate them. Then we have Achilles and Patroclus from The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. They are very sad. Do you ever cry? I mean it's like sad and tragic but also like not like destined and like wonderful but like do you ever cry? Now we're pulling out all the big guns. Like the top six I feel like are like the ones that are like OTP! Like obviously top ten are like OTPs but this is like the ones that give me heart palpitations. We have Karu and Akiva from The Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lenny Taylor. Oh my god. I was not expecting to be so obsessed with them and like the angst. The angst. Like I think one of the common threads in all of these is the angst, you know? And like the angst meter just goes up and up and up and they have a lot of angst and like the different tropes that are used for their relationship are some that like can be done really really poorly but they're done so well in here. I love it. I ate it up. I ate it up. I still think about them and I get like, mm. like I need to continue with the series but also I'm like, mm. like I don't know what to do. Then number five we have Leah and Rafe from The Beauty of Darkness by Mary E. Pearson. This is the final book in the Remnant Chronicles and I have just loved watching their relationship develop for the entire trilogy. I just love them. Like they were my OTP loved them completely after the first book, like within the first book and I've just been rooting for them the entire series and I just love them. I think they have such a mature relationship especially for like a YA series. We do have a lot of those like very dramatic relationships like they are both leaders and rulers and know how to choose what's best for their country but also what's best for them and kind of struggling with that and I just really adore them. Like they give each other the option to choose what they want to do and like don't try to like pressure each other into anything and don't try to like stop the other one from doing what they need to do that's best for their country and they just give me a lot of emotions. I love them a lot. Then we have a two-way tie at number four and that is Moore and Asriel and Reese and Favra from A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas. I love them both a lot. Like I'm not gonna talk about all the couples in here because there are a number of couples and like it's just very confusing and convoluted where all of them sit. Like everybody else falls below these guys so put them wherever you want really in a list because I don't really know how I feel about a lot of them because a lot of them were revealed like the very last few pages of the book so like how can I really ship it when I don't know anything about how their relationship works and they're just thrown together because they're both hetero like it, but these two pairings were like from the get-go you know talked about and like shown or whatever so we got to actually see them throughout this book and I love them both a lot. I just I just like a lot of it and the angstiness and the like Hayes Persephone elements that is the Feyre and Reese relationship and a lot of the stuff that got revealed with him obviously and like yeah does it excuse everything that happened in book one? No. Is this book series incredibly problematic? Yes. Do I still really like this these couples? Yeah I do and I really love more Azrael. I want an entire book series devoted to them. Please let that second trilogy that, that she's like teasing possibly coming out with be about them. Please. Please. I don't care about anyone else as much as I care about them. Please. Please. Number three is Khalid and Shazi from The Wrath of the Dawn and The Rose and the Dagger by Renee Adier. I marathon read this series and loved it. The angst is strong with this one. It's really great and I have a lot of feelings about them and them as a couple and them as a supportive couple and her as like initially going in kind of like trying to like basically use him and kill him and like it's just, it's just great. And I really love it. I love like the whole progression of their relationship and how well suited they are for one another and how like she has always been the one kind of in charge of the whole thing and some of the quotes, some of the quotes, like there's a quote, and I, again I'm gonna paraphrase, where he basically calls her like a plague of a woman that he, she's like consuming him or something and she was like well you better get away because you know like that sounds dangerous or blah 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 you know and they're still in their like sort of 
bantery, will they, won't they part of the relationship? And he's like, no, destroy me. And I'm like, ah! Like, it's so good. I mean, quotes like that are the fastest way to kill me and put me into like, yep, OTP right there. Stuff like that. Yeah, that's, that's my aesthetic. Speaking of my aesthetic, back at it again with Truth Witch at number two with Edwin and Isult. Again, I just finished reading this again and I'm currently reading Wind Witch. Oh my god, <laughs> I just love them! Like, OTP completely. And like, y'all can talk to me all you want about how like, oh, like you started shipping that when she almost tried, they almost tried to kill each other? Yeah, I did. I did. Fight me. Because I love him. I love him so much and like the, the angstiness and like the progression of their like relationship and how they're going to be kind of like tied together and some of the things and again there's another quote another quote in here between these two one of them in a time of crisis that's the state of the other one trust me as if my soul were yours in like the language that they both know and I died. Like it's just so good like I just love quotes like that and like they are now tied together and like there's a couple times where he's like you know I'm gonna track you down and find you because like they're a, sort of antagonists to each other at this point and she's like you're not gonna kill me. <laughs> and like whenever the girl has all of this power and she like makes the dude weak I fucking live for it okay like it is it speaks to me on so many levels and like it's just it's what I it's what I live for it's the kind of ship archetype that I live for and they're great and I, I have a lot of emotions about them. A lot of emotions about them. I just, anytime they interact I like screech. Like if I, if they're even coming close to each other, because obviously characters like ebb and flow out of like interactions with one another in the series, it's a multiple POV story. If they're even coming close I'm like, eh, the high pitched keening, because like I love them a ton. And like this series isn't even really about the ships, like there's some really good ships in here obviously that I've talked about, but it's about the friendships and like the fact that the relationships, like the romantic potential relationships can bring me to my knees in such a way speaks to how good it is. And number one is Do You Know Me At All? Of course Kaz and Inej from Crooked Kingdom. Like, oh my god! Like everything about them is beautiful. I still see fan art for them obviously because the series is like so wildly popular and I scream like every time the beautiful fan art that's come out for them and just two really flawed human beings that have come together and are really supportive of one each other and are like both dealing with their own personal trauma and baggage associated with relationships and like any kind of physical contact and that they're both really supportive and really just like willing to work at the other one's pace and understand while not having the same situation going on understand each other and are both completely badass and are equals and are like basically ruling the underworld that is Ketterdam together. I love them. I love them so much. And like, I just want them both to be super happy. And I just love the relationship that's just like one of those things where like, we're going to be together and like whatever happens happens and like, we'll figure it out. And we don't have to worry about like these grand overtures and like getting, you know, married or something. Like we don't need that. Like we're just going to be who we are together and separate. And like, mm, they're just so supportive of one another and they've grown so much and they mean a lot to me a lot to me. I love them. Whew! That was exhausting. So comment down below let me know some of your favorite ships that you read about in 2016. Maybe some of your least favorite as well. This was a long video. I love doing these but like it's it's a it's a long long video. So thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye!